I was thinking this morning about the passage that we are looking at in Galatians. And again, Paul in Galatians is telling us, man, that, that we are firm in the faith, justified before God by Christ and faith in Christ alone. Nothing else, nothing added to it, um, nothing that we have to do to, to uh, try to gain greater favor with God. Um, he is, uh, we're, we're secure in that. So the hymn came to my mind this morning as I was just meditating on the passage we're looking at, this old hymn, The Solid Rock. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Darkness veils its lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. Every high Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath is covenant, his blood, support me in the whelming flood, and all around. shall come with trumpet sound, oh may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. I just want to sing that last verse again and think about the words in this. It's what Paul is telling us in Galatians. When he comes, when we see him, when we are changed in the twinkling of an eye and we shall be as he is, the only reason is because we're secure in what he has done for us. Shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, walk the stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. On Him alone, our faith rests, our hope, the faith, once for all for the saints, as Jude says in his book. Um, aren't you glad this morning that... Christ drew you to him. He opened your eyes, gave you the faith to trust in the gospel message that, that you heard, preached, or told to you, and um, man, he saved you. Paul, <laughs> Paul starts this chapter, or Paul goes into, it's almost as if Paul's getting more worked up as he's writing the letter. 
And the more he's thinking, thinking about it, I think that maybe in Paul's heart, he, uh, he is definitely upset at those who are corrupting the gospel, who are adding things to the gospel, preaching a different gospel. Earlier in chapter 1, he says, man, if any other man or any angel comes to you preaching a different gospel than what I preached, let him be accursed. That means to be damned. And then it, it's almost as if he's, he's irritated at the Galatians. I understand that. And it's not that he's irritated in a, in a way that's derogative to them, but that they have turned away from the true gospel and they believed a lie. And he starts in his first verse in chapter 3 by saying, Oh, foolish Galatians! I, I, I dare to say that if I stood in the pulpit on a Sunday morning and said, Oh, foolish first Conyers. Um, I get some irony. I get some people ired at me. But Paul's heart in this is not to condemn them or criticize them. There's really a desire. There's a passion that they stay and walk in, in the true gospel, that it is by faith alone and not by works. Um, I'm sure he may have faced some criticism for this. But Paul wasn't expressing his opinion. What Paul is expressing here is, is really the heart of God as he's inspired by the Holy Spirit. Oh, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Who has deceived you? That word bewitched has, has, uh, has the meaning of sorcery behind it. Who has put a spell on you? Foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. You hear what Paul is saying. Listen, you heard the testimony. You heard the truth of Christ being, being, being crucified, and it was portrayed to you accurately that Christ was crucified. And in that statement of his crucifixion is the declaration that Christ died for our sins, that Christ shed his blood for our sins, and Christ received the wrath from the Father when our sins were placed on him. The wrath that you and I deserved, the wrath that you and I should have received or received, Christ received that for us. He who knew no sin became sin for us, became a sin offering for us, Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians. So he's saying, listen, Christ was crucified for your sins. He paid the price so that... You, you don't have to try to perform in order to gain the righteousness of God in Christ and be justified as we talked about yesterday. So when we think about Christ's crucifixion, man, as I was meditating on that this morning, and, and it was almost visually that I, I could almost see Christ on the cross and, and my sins that were placed on him, your sins, the sins of the world were placed on him and shed for our our. Uh, for the payment and atonement of our sins, it just overwhelmed me again. It just never gets old, amen? But it takes, it takes that, that concentrated time for us to reflect on that. That's why, to me, that our morning devotions, not only in this format, but your personal morning devotions are so important because it's a message that we need to be reminded of every single day. Because every single day, we are tempted to be drawn away from that. We're led by the flesh. We're led by the world system away from that. But that we come back every day and focus on the reality of our salvation in Christ. Then he goes on to say in verse 2, Let me ask you this. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Now, it's interesting that this is the first time in the book of Galatians. And then from this point on, Paul mentions the Holy Spirit 16 different times. Um, you know, <clears throat> being raised a good Baptist, uh, we, we, we learned of the Spirit, but we didn't learn much of the operation of the Spirit. There wasn't a lot of talk about the moving of the Spirit in our hearts, but it's all through Scripture. And I'm not talking about the wacky stuff, swinging off chandeliers, but we seem to be so afraid of the Holy Spirit because we didn't want to be accused of being Pentecostal. Um, but... but to our error, we ignored, I think for a long time, the work of the Holy Spirit of God. And so here Paul is saying, listen, when you received Christ, 
He repeats this in Ephesians. When you receive Christ, you receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit of God. There is not a second work of the Holy Spirit in that sense of you get saved and then later you work somehow, or you grovel, or you perform a certain way, and then all of a sudden you get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. No, we're baptized into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit of God. Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 1 that, that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. And when you and I were saved, God gave us the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. And he says, did you receive the Spirit by works um, that you had to perform a certain way before you received the Holy Spirit? In their case, did you receive the Holy Spirit after you placed your faith in Christ and then became circumcised as these false teachers are teaching? And we still have things that, that people propagate today that we have to add to our salvation. Listen, our salvation has been done. It's complete. And the moment we were saved... We received the Holy Spirit. We got all of the Holy Spirit. The question always remains, while I know I've received all of the Holy Spirit, how much of me does he have control over? And see, I'm the one that is responsible to relinquish control of my life, of the Holy Spirit. He says, uh, it's kind of a rhetorical question. Did you receive it by works or by faith? And the obvious answer is, they, they received it by faith. When they placed their trust in Christ, they received the Holy Spirit. Are you so foolish? Here he goes again. Boy, I'm going to have to try this on one Sunday morning. <laughs> Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, that you are now being perfected by the flesh? You began your salvation, you began your walk with God through Christ by, by faith. And, and now are you, are, you, are you thinking that you can now perfect yourself by the flesh? Listen, your flesh and my flesh only produces more flesh. It will never produce anything better. Our flesh is, 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 has been corrupted by the old sin nature. And if, if, we're, if, we, if we don't yield to the Holy Spirit of God, the flesh will take over. It's a condition that we are living with as believers until the day that Jesus either returns or we die and we go to heaven. Uh, and we'll be as he is. He says, did you suffer so many things in vain? Uh, did, you, did you go through so many trials in vain for no reason at all? If indeed it, it, it was in vain, does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, do so by works of the law or by hearing with faith. You see, God's, uh, God's work in them had been done by the Spirit of God through their faith in Christ, not by anything that they did. I'm so reminded that in the ministry, the mission of the local church, that we can, we can, we can begin to think that we can do it on our own, by our own works of flesh. If we just have the right programs, if we have the right preacher, if we have the right student ministry, if we have the right kind of, all of these kinds of things we think, and we forget that it's the Spirit of God who has to do all the work. Now, it doesn't mean that we don't put the effort in. It doesn't mean that we just sit on our laurels and wait for the Spirit of God. No, there, there are things that He's called us to do and leads us to do. But we do it depending on the Holy Spirit of God to bring about fruit that will last. If it's by our own efforts, if it's by our own programs, if it's, if it's by our own constitution and bylaws, etc., all of those things, listen, it's useless. It's in vain. And you can build a crowd on those kinds of things, but the question is, are you building Christ followers? You see, it can only be done by the Holy Spirit of God. Then he goes on to say, just as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. It's amazing how we're, where we're studying now on Sunday mornings in the book of Genesis and looking at Abraham. It, it, it goes all the way to here. Abraham uh, was justified. He was declared righteous by faith, just as we are. Know then that it is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify 
We spoke of justification yesterday. The Gentiles, by faith, preached the gospel before to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. Just a reminder this morning that it's by faith that we trust in Christ that we were saved. There's nothing you or I can do to add to our faith. There's nothing that you or I can do to make us more Christian. There's nothing that we can do except trust in what Christ has done for us. I pray this morning God gives us an opportunity to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart where he would bring us along and we'd be sensitive to the Holy Spirit's leading and plant that seed of the gospel that we'd be able to cultivate a seed maybe that's already been planted there and that God by his grace would allow us to see someone to witness a person being saved this morning. And so we'll trust and walk by the Holy Spirit and allow him to do that through us today. Man, I want to remind you, our What's at Stake dinner is this Thursday night, 6.30 p.m. Um, if you have not purchased a ticket online yet, I'd encourage you to do that. Just go to our website, uh, firstconyers.com, and you'll find a link where you can register. Uh, and, and if it's last minute, we have some extras um, and I'd love for you to, to be a part of that. Bring somebody with you that is either unchurched or um, is unsaved. Uh, that night, they'll, they'll see men who, who desire to have a walk with God. And the rest of you ladies, would you please be praying for that night? Pray that God would move by the Holy Spirit and that, uh, that we would be encouraged, we'd be edified, and that some would come to know Christ. I pray the Lord's blessings on you, keep you. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.